Namaste. I'm very excited to share with you today some of the science behind what's going on in the field of epigenetics and genetics and why it is we're going to be doing a DNA cleanse later on in this video. And one of the things that science has found when it comes to our genes is that a propensity for certain illnesses get passed on down through the generations. And so for instance, let's say, in, even in the 1950s they knew this, that, that if a friend of yours was diagnosed with breast cancer and they went to their oncologist, the first question the doctor would ask was, well, who in your family had cancer? And the reason they could ask this question was because of all the science going on in the field of genetics where we understood that that pattern and that capacity, the propensity for cancer was being passed down to future generations. Well, more recently in the last couple of decades, a new field has evolved that's been called epigenetics. And what's been found is certain emotional patterns, cell memories that our uh, forebears went through, beliefs that they had, got passed down into our DNA strands. And so the reason it's important to do a DNA cleanse is because these genes get expressed and unexpressed in our lifetime. That's a scientific term for being switched on or switched off. Now, originally in the 1950s, it was believed that once you had this propensity for, let's say, cancer, that it was immutable. That was the way it was for life. But now in more recent times, it's been realized that actually our genes become expressed or unexpressed during our lifetime. And that they did a lot of uh, experiments with rats and they found that in rats, in their DNA strand, they have a compassion gene. So let's say a rat is born and it's licked and fondled in its lifetime. Well, that compassion gene will get expressed, it will get switched on in its lifetime. And if it gives birth to a baby rat, automatically that compassion gene will be switched on in a baby rat. But if the baby rat is not licked and fondled in its lifetime, then that compassion gene will switch off, will become unexpressed. And when it gives birth to another baby rat, that baby rat is born with a compassion gene that is switched off. So it's very important that we're aware that actually our genes can be switched on and switched off during our lifetime. And one of the things that we, I have begun to work with the, with the journey is I began to see that what is being shown in science is showing up in journey work. I can remember the first time I went to Germany, it was in 2003, and I was giving the journey intensive in Munich. And on the second day of the journey intensive, we were, had undergone the physical journey where we were getting access to cell memories that are stored inside our physical body. And one man said, he shared that he'd gone inside his heart, and even though he didn't actually have any heart problems that he was aware of, the cell memory he discovered there, it wasn't his own. It was a cell memory of his mother. Now his mother was in the concentration camp in, in uh, World War II, and when, she gave birth to her son. She did what in German is called going stumm. We don't talk about what happened in that war. And so she went stumm and never talked about anything that had happened during the war. Well, in his journey process, he, when he went into his own heart, the cell memory he uncovered was what she went through in the concentration camps. And he experienced the horror and the devastation and the terror and all of that. Had to go through a process of release and letting go and understanding and forgiveness. And he said, you know, Brandon, it's an odd thing. Though I never knew what my mother had experienced in that concentration camp till this very moment, it's like I was born with this lid over my life. It's like I did not have permission 
in life to be crazy and enthusiastic and make mistakes and have fun and be carefree. I just didn't have that. It's like I was born with this emotional you know, lid over my life. And I asked everybody in the room, well, how many of you in this room, we were about 240 people, feel that you were born with a lid over your life, that you, you weren't able to just be carefree and fulfilled and joyous and God forbid make mistakes and everyone raised their hands. And then I looked at my own life. Now I grew up in America in a country that's so, supposedly all about freedom, right? All about being able to be potentialized to be the best that you can be. And yet I realized that I'd grown up with a lid over my life. Because my mother, she grew up in Vienna, Austria. And during World War II, during the Holocaust, her husband was shot down by the Luftwaffe. He was a photojournalist during World War II and he got shot down. And so she gave birth to my brother, uh, Michael, uh, without a husband. And then her father was put into a Nazi prison and then shot through the head. And so she, like this man's mother, she went, shh, dum. we don't talk about the horror of what happened. I didn't even know what happened to my grandfather. I didn't know my grandfather's name. I didn't know about her previous husband. I mean, she met my, my father, was an American soldier stationed there in Vienna, and they fell in love, came to America. And when she moved to America, it's just she did not want to say one word about her past. So I knew nothing about my mother growing up. And yet, even though I'd grown up in a land that's supposedly all about freedom, to be all that you can be, I too realized that I had grown up with a lid over my life and over my light. And so I realized I was coming to Europe not only just to serve in awakening and healing with others, but in my own healing. Now, I realized that we all of us have a potential gene to be the greatness that we are. For instance, if, if, you know, let's say there's been enlightened masters and great saints and sages and great uh, beings, spiritual beings, throughout all time, wise beings, you know, Christ and Buddha and the, the masters and poet saints and etc. So it must mean that all of us have this ability to open into our full divine potential, into the enlightenment that we are, into the fullness of what we're capable of as human beings. But not only that, but let's say our parents had the belief that we're not capable of healing. Other people may heal, but I just don't have that capacity to heal. I am sure that in all of us, that if there's a compassion gene in a rat and the ability to be your full potential as a human being, we certainly must have a, a gene in there for our health and the ability to heal against the odds. Because why is it some people heal where others don't and they have the same illness? And so because these genes are capable of turning on and turning off in our lifetime, it's essential that we consciously get in touch with our other than conscious being, with, our, with the deeper, most innermost self, and give our being permission to turn on those genes that support us and also to turn off the genes that do not support us. And so this is why today it's important that you undergo this DNA cleanse that I've created specifically for this time that we are living through right now, these unprecedented, uncertain times, where probably you've noticed that a lot of your parents' issues are now emotionally starting to emerge as we've been triggered by life and we're all of us living in the unknown. And so I welcome you with all my heart to join me in this meditation. So go find a place where you can get comfortable. 
It's probably going to take about 20 minutes and get comfortable, turn off all the, you know, noises around you and let this be a very powerful thing for a process that you need to undergo during these very uncertain times. So a heartfelt namaste. So we're going to go into the DNA cleanse right now. And I hope you found a place that's comfortable. And when you're ready, you can close your eyes. And let's just take a deep breath in of openness and blowing that into the room. And the deep breath in of willingness to meet whatever stored inside your DNA strand. Just breathing that in. And a deep breath in of trust. Trusting in yourself, in life, in the infinite intelligence, your soul. Breathing that into the room. And letting your whole body and your being just soften and open. Giving yourself permission just to relax. And letting your heart be as wide as the world. Wide enough to include whatever is stored inside you. Even your ancestors' patterns. That's how vast this infinite love is. spacious and vast, free and endless in front of you, boundlessly vast and free behind, and infinitely free to all sides of you. And you're just resting here in a vast open sky of all acceptance. And into this open sky, imagining right now in your mind's eye that in front of you is a warming campfire. And there's the present day you standing at this campfire and a younger you. And so there's just these two people standing here. And as you look or open with the younger you, imagine right now that there's an energy body that's stepping outside the form of the younger you. It's made up of molecules and light and space and cells. So it's the energy body of that younger you. And you're looking at this form that's made up of molecules and space and cells and light and extracting from that form a single cell and letting that appear very large in your mind's eye. And inside this cell is a DNA strand. And what a DNA strand looks like is like a ladder that's in a spiral shape where the various rungs on the ladder are different genes. And so imagining this DNA strand made up of 
molecules and these rungs in the shape of a spiral ladder. So taking this DNA strand and making it very large in front of you in your mind's eye, and I'd like to ask you to welcome a mentor to come join you as the two of you go look at this DNA strand. And the mentor can be a sage or a saint or enlightened master or someone in whose divine wisdom you trust. And so imagining this DNA strand in front of you. And as we learned earlier, certain of our genes are express, they're active, and certain of our genes are unexpressed or inactive. They're not switched on. Now we learned earlier that even a rat has a compassion gene. And so I'd like the mentor to have a pointing stick and point to the compassion gene that's on this DNA strand. And if it's not switched on, have the mentor just switch it on, just turn it on as if turning on the lights. We also spoke earlier about that we all have the capacity for enlightenment for living our full divine potential because surely if people have realized their infinite nature as being part of the fabric of the universe being connected in the one to all of existence and this has happened throughout all time it means that we as human beings have this capacity to be fully open to and to live our full divine potential. And so ask the mentor to point to that gene where you have this ability to live in the freedom and love that is your essence from that oneness, that full divine potential, your enlightenment gene. So let the mentor locate that, point to it. If it's not switched on, turn it on, let it light up. Now, of course, we also, all of us, have this capacity to heal. You know, there can be two people who are near a nuclear plant and one gets ill and dies and another gets ill and lives. And so this capacity, this capability to heal when there is a condition already here, if it exists in one of us, then all of us carry this gene. And so this ability to heal and have your mentor point to that ability to heal and switch it on. Now, if we have a compassion gene, we certainly have a gene where we can feel empathy with others, to feel with them. So finding that empathy gene. And go ahead and switching that on. Now, some of us may have had ancestors or forebears who did not believe that we deserved to have success. They didn't believe that we were capable of realizing our full potential materially in life. And so all of us have this ability to live our full, not just divine potential, but our full capabilities, our full talents, our full creativity. So that's living our full human potential. So go ahead 
and locate this gene that gives you the ability to live your fu full human potential and have the mentor point to it and once again if it's not on switch it on now perhaps you've had ancestors or parents or forebears who didn't believe you would amount to anything or who believed that you were worthless or that you would never become anything and if that somehow that belief was passed down generationally to you have the mentor locate that negative belief that I'm worthless I won't amount to anything and switch it off so if it's turned on switch it off make it be unexpressed and now beginning to open up and speak out loud some of the beliefs that have been passed on to you through themes that you and your family have carried beliefs that you know I'll never amount to anything or I'm not worthy of love or I'll, I'll never be attractive enough to receive love or no one will ever love me you know the kinds of beliefs that your whole life long they've been kind of running underneath everything and so on the count of three I'm going to ask you to whisper out loud into your room some of the limiting and negative and debilitating beliefs that have been passed on to you so on the count of three just speaking it out loud it has to be spoken out loud one two three some beliefs you may have about health that you're not the kind of person who heals perhaps some of the beliefs are around your ability to have loving relationship or your ability to manifest abundance in your life or to let your creative potential be expressed just keep emptying out beliefs you've had about yourself and about your body okay now if you've had a belief where you know you're not living your full creative potential that somehow you've got a lid over that well ask the mentor to go find the creativity gene and switch it on or if there's some belief here that you'll never do well in relationship or you're not worthy of love or you can't give and receive love or you've been hurt and therefore can't receive love so something having to do with relationship go ahead and have the mentor point towards that gene and if it's not serving you switch it off finding another gene where you may have been told that you're just not smart enough you're not intelligent enough or come to believe that about yourself now if there's genius in humanity well it means that that capacity for genius exists in all of us but some of us are blocked in that area so go ahead and find the real intelligence gene the the genius gene the smartness gene whatever you want to call it go locate that and switch it on let it be expressed and now if there's a gene where you were told you weren't 
ever going to be smart enough, capable enough, good enough. You'll never get it right. You just don't have the wherewithal. You don't have the intrinsic intelligence, the capability. Well, there's bound to be a gene where that, if that is switched on, it ought to be turned off. So locate that gene and have it switched off. Continue any of the beliefs that were passed on to you generationally. The chances are they're living in your DNA. So switch on the health-giving, life-giving, vitality-giving, potentializing genes and switch off the ones that are limiting, debilitating, disabling, or hindering in some way. And as you turn something on, say out loud in the room, what is the gene that you're turning on? And as <clears throat> you're turning off a limiting gene, say out loud what that limiting gene is and switching that off. Now I'd like to ask you to invite your parents to come here this moment. And if you were adopted and you don't know who your birth mom or birth dad is, just welcome their souls to come for now. And invite your parents' parents, your grandparents on both sides. And your great-grandparents on all sides. And just keep going back until the beginning of time where all these things that we've been carrying, these beliefs, these patterns, these themes, these propensities, have come down generationally. They say that they're passed down between four and six generations. So go back at least four generations. And having your mother and your father standing there as a representative of the generations that came before them. I'd like you to speak some words to your parents and first of all to thank your parents for doing the best that they could, passing on all that they believed to you. And so in your own words and in your own way, thanking them for doing the best that they could, passing on to us, probably unknowingly and some of it knowingly, what they believed would support us best, what they believed was true about ourselves, what they believed life would give us, and just thanking them for passing on what they passed on. Say that out loud in your own words. And now saying to them, I thank you for all that you've given to me. And it's time now for me to be free from everything that's not mine, that doesn't belong to me, that is of yours. And so I'm asking your permission right now to free myself from these limiting beliefs and negative patterns that may have been passed down generationally, knowingly and unknowingly. So go ahead and ask your parents for permission to be freed from the limiting patterns and negative beliefs. And now receive that permission from them. And now you give them permission to set themselves and their parents and their grandparents, their great-grandparents, free from these negativities, 
these limitations, that they are free to be wholly and fully potentialized in their highest human potential, their highest divine potential. So speak out loud whatever words you wish to say to them that they have full permission to be fully potentialized in their divine and human potential. And now as if there's this umbilical cord that's come from your mother's family and from your father's family that's been like a trunk line between you and your parents, I'd like you to send this full divine potential, human potential, this enlightenment, this compassion, this empathy, the capacity to heal, even when others aren't healing, on and on, the creativity, the intelligence, all that is good and potentializing, to shoot it down through this big trunk line that's between you and them. And it's going back, back, back through the generations. It's going this trunk line of energy, of love, of potential, is pouring into your mother, into your father, into your grandparents, your great-grandparents, whoo, just go, going like that, right back to all the forebears. And then having an angel or a big force of nature come and cut that umbilical cord, cut that trunk line of energy, and let this light, this love, this potential, this consciousness go to all of them and let that same light, that potential, that consciousness go into the younger you standing there. Just feel your whole body lighting up with molecules of light and the spaces in between are completely suffused with, permeated and saturated with this consciousness of being your full enlightened potential, your full human potential, your full physical and health potential, your capacity to heal, your creative potential, your intelligence, your capability, your ability to give and receive love. This enlightenment, living in the knowledge of the oneness with all of existence, all of that is this consciousness pouring into the you standing there. And now all your, your parents and your ancestors before them can merge into the light with this permission to live their full human and divine potential. And now a shower of this consciousness, this cleansing consciousness of living your full human and divine potential is going to shower over the DNA strand. And it's going to turn off any unhealthy, unsupportive genes. And it's going to switch on like a Christmas tree the lights of those potentializing genes. And it's just a cleansing, potentializing shower of grace, cleansing and clearing your DNA strand, where it's like this spiralized ladder with these rungs that are genes made up of molecules and light. And just seeing all of it just being washed clean completely transmuted into the consciousness of living from the freedom, the love, the light that is your full divine potential, living from the health and vitality that is the ability of the physical form and this capacity to heal, living from the intelligence, the wisdom, the genius that is available here, living with the capability to allow and welcome healthy, wholesome abundance in your life. This ability to have healthy relationships. This ability 
and capability to do what needs doing in the life. Just this consciousness of scintillating grace, like a waterfall of grace, is washing over the DNA strand, cleansing it now. Switching on, the infinite intelligence is switching on those genes that support and switching off, making unexpressed those genes that do not. And now taking this DNA strand, and putting it into that giant cell and now letting this spiritual shower, this waterfall of grace, wash not only the whole cell clean in the sheath of the cell, but also to permeate through osmosis the cell itself. And the waterfall of grace is just scintillating and washing every cell clean. And when you clear one cell, at every single moment, whatever's happening with one cell is happening simultaneous to all cells in the body. So go ahead and letting this waterfall of grace wash that cell clean and clear. And now taking that cell and putting it back into the energy body that was made up of particles of light and cells, and now let this big waterfall of light, of consciousness, of living your full divine and human potential, wash down through the energy body, just washing in between all the spaces of the molecule. The only, the only thing that exists is this living your full divine potential and your full human potential on all levels of being. That is what is permeating, saturating, and suffusing the spaces between the molecules and taking this cleansed energy body and putting it now into the physical form of the younger you and opening a hole in the top of the head of the younger you and letting a waterfall of this divine potential, this divine and human potential, this consciousness, this grace, wash down through the brain cells of the younger you and into the eyes, into the face, washing on down like a waterfall of grace into the, into the neck, in the throat area, drenching on down through the arms, and into the shoulder area and pouring on down into the chest and upper back area of the younger you, drenching down like a waterfall of grace through the whole of the body, of the torso, pouring through the chest and the solar plexus and, and the back and pouring into the waistline and into the belly and, and into the backside and the pelvic region, pouring on down through the hips and pelvic region, down into the legs, down into those upper thighs, middle of thighs, knees, legs, feet, and now pouring and consciously, like a waterfall of grace, shooting out in the environment around you, washing the entire environment around you, that every single molecule of existence is scintillating as this permission to live as your full human potential, this permission to live as your full divine potential. And that is all that exists. Molecules of grace and this consciousness in between the molecules. And seeing this waterfall of grace cleansing, purifying, and now hugging that younger you, letting the younger you merge inside you, and now opening the top of your own head and letting this waterfall of transmutational grace that transmutes all consciousness into a living your full divine potential, living your full human potential, letting it pour on down like a waterfall of grace into your own 
head into your brain, in the upper brain, in the middle of the brain, into the eyes, into the face, into the mouth, filling the whole head, every single molecule, singing and dancing with that consciousness. All the spaces in between are permeated, saturated, suffused with it. And this consciousness is pouring down into your neck and your throat muscles, down into your shoulders, a waterfall of cleansing grace pouring down into your own arms, pouring into the chest and into the upper back, drenching on down through the whole center of the torso, pouring on down into the heart area and opening the door to your own heart and letting it shoot out now into the environment around you, drenching on down now through your solar plexus, down through your back, down through the middle, the core, into your belly, waistline, backside, into your pelvic region, your hips, and into the lower pelvic region. And it's a waterfall of grace, drenching on down into the upper thighs, middle of the thighs, knees, legs, feet. And now this waterfall of grace This transmutational healing grace, this consciousness of living your full human potential, your full divine potential is shooting out into the universe, surrounding you, bathing you, every single molecule of existence is this consciousness. All the spaces in between are suffused, saturated with it. And this consciousness is infinite, spacious, vast, and free in front of you, is boundlessly free, and infinite behind you, is endlessly free and spacious to all sides of you. just resting right now in this consciousness as it knowing the fact that you can even conceive of this consciousness means you can start from here starting now letting the campfire disappear And you're just resting in this vast, open field of divine potential and human potential. All of existence scintillating as an expression of your true self. Taking a nice deep breath in and letting it out. And another nice deep breath in and letting it out. And just resting, soaking, steeping in this, as this, so that eyes open or eyes closed, same, same, same vast divine potential, same vast human potential. And taking another nice deep breath in, Letting it out. (sighs) And we can open our eyes now into this field of potential. Taking another nice deep breath in. 
letting it out and opening the eyes now. So you should feel free to do this DNA cleanse that we've been doing today. Anytime you feel like you need to be reminded and opened into the consciousness of who you are, what you are, and what you're capable of. And a heartfelt namaste.